sorry, and Mr. Sandfield is here as the co-chair of the said staff. Yes, my name is Colin Stansfield. I'm the executive director of Potluck Cafe Society. For the last six months, I have been the co-chair of said SAC. I took that seat merely to keep it warm for Hendrick, and it was unfortunate he wasn't able to be here today with us in the body. He's certainly here with us in fashion and spirit, and I know the legacy of this work is woven throughout this plan. In Wes's presentation, he highlighted nine pillars that inform the strategy. I think there's a very important tenth one that I would have put out there, and that is reconciliation. I think there's work that can still be done in this process to further Vancouver's commitment to becoming a city of reconciliation. The City of Reconciliation Staff Report 2416 states that there are 27 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada's calls to action that the city felt it could directly impact. It doesn't state which 27 those are, but I'd like to draw your attention to number 92, which is business and reconciliation. I can take a moment of my time to read it. It says, we call upon the corporate sector in Canada to adopt the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as a reconciliation framework and to apply its principles, norms, and standards to corporate policy and core operational activities involving Indigenous peoples and their lands and resources. This would include, but not be limited to, the following. Commit to meaningful consultation, building respectful relationships, and obtaining the free, prior, and informed consent of Indigenous peoples before proceeding with economic development projects. Two, to ensure that Aboriginal peoples have equitable access to jobs, training, and educational opportunities in the corporate sector, and that Aboriginal communities gain long-term sustainable benefits from economic development projects. I would suggest that some would probably interpret that more narrowly and think merely of natural resource development, but that any community economic development strategy or economic development that happens within the city of Vancouver on the unceded and ancestral territories of the Coast Salish people needs to be informed by call to action number 92. I would also suggest there's probably an opportunity then to make sure that this is informing the work of other divisions. And where that came to fore in this process was learning that CED largely was something that was held within the social policy department. Where we figured that out was with our community benefit agreements working through. So what we did was we got together on six different opportunities and came up with six principles that we thought needed to inform community benefit agreements. Those aren't explicitly written out in the strategy in front of you. And I think why that is, is that the strategy has to get passed from division to division to division. And there isn't a strong familiarity with the principles of community economic development. So for the point of getting them on the record, I want to list those six items. First, that the community needs to represent itself in community benefit agreements and negotiations. But two, that agreements carry the full force of municipal authority. As a point earlier from the councillor about needing to use the stick and not just the carrot, we want to make sure that there are teeth in this process. Three, that the process must be facilitated by an independent third party, not merely a private consultant hired by the proponent. Four, the agreements need to cover all four phases of development, pre-construction, construction, occupancy, and operations. That's how we're going to make sure that we're able to plan ahead for all different resource needs and labor needs that go with these projects. Five, the city needs to play the game too. City of Vancouver developments need to also engage with community in an empowered and meaningful way. And five, or six, excuse me, that there needs to be accountability back to community. The sort of murky world of community amenity contributions and developer cost levies isn't going to be enough for the community to accept community benefit agreements. So talk then specifically about two points that Potluck would love to champion in the project that's in front of you. Um, partnering with anchor institutions and recognizing the immense skill and capability of Vancouver's very rich social enterprise community. Specifically at Potluck, the ability to use food as a vehicle for community economic development. There are any number of contracts that total hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in fact, that are handed out in piecemeal fashion that often come at a price point so low it's, it's Shameful, really, and the only people who are able to answer those RFPs are large multinational corporations who aren't able to then hire locally. If we can start to bring those together and plan over a five, six year period how we can consolidate those, we're going to be able to get to a price point that will allow us to feed more people in the community, but more importantly, hire more people in the community. Because we know that there is an undeniable link between food insecurity and income insecurity. Potluck wants to help with that. And finally, really important, the recognition of task work, task work and informal employment that is in this strategy. I think Wes was right in pointing out that so much of the work previously has been committed to the right end of the spectrum. This notion of formal employment and supported employment, but it just isn't enough. Potluck spent 15 years trying to fight that team, and we've recognized that it hasn't gotten us far enough down the road. So our newest employment initiative, NAC, that has also been referenced today, is all about meeting people where they're at, finding out what skills they have, awarding them with the credentials that employers will recognize, and finding them those task-based employment opportunities. Because there are 10,000 people living on income assistance in the downtown east side each and every one of whom is allowed to earn additional income each month in the form of an earning exemption. Add that all up, it's $56 million a year of money that would flow into the pockets of our most vulnerable and marginalized community. Translated, that's 302,000 person hours every single month for employers who are able to think openly and inclusively about who and how they hire. That is just that. For people facing barriers to employment, 
NAC has a clear path to meaningful work through skills-based training, and for employers, NAC has a hiring strategy to achieve community impact through inclusive employment. We look forward to championing this strategy for those two initiatives. Wow, I feel like you guys um, should give courses to council on how to stay in a five minute time limit. That was very impressive, thank you. Um, Councilor Deal, questions? Yes, thanks very much. Thanks for just asking me for being here. I'd like to just ask a little bit more around the food uh, issue that you raised. Can you give us an example of some of the, what you see as the, as the um, some of the contracts that could be combined? I mean, I'm not quite being able to picture it right now. Yeah, so we, the school board contract that went out a number of months ago was an example. And the way that looks for Pollock is when we look at how we would submit a bid for that, we're either able to have our labor funded or the ingredients funded. And we have a mission around good food and good jobs, so we can't give up either one of those. If we were to partner that Vancouver School Board procurement to RFP with the downtown east side Vancouver Coastal Health RFP that went out, we start to get to a number where we're able to not just meet the needs of those budget-constrained anchor institutions, but also to be able to provide more food for others. And so we talk specifically about school programs. You know, there's this challenge that's constantly raised about how are we going to feed those 200 kids that are scattered across so many schools. The very obvious answer is by feeding every single kid. And we can do that when we bring larger, more targeted versions of social procurement and using food as a vehicle for young adult development. So you're talking inter interagency as well as inter Absolutely. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Deal. Councillor DiGenova. I had a question regarding, a follow-up question to what I just asked of our staff. And your business is the perfect example of one that reaches out beyond the downtown east side, although you're locally based. And uh, I know that I've enjoyed uh, potluck services before. I, I was just wondering if, if you, you, if I could ask you if you would have any advice for how, how the city could help to empower. I know it's not our job specifically to take that entire thing on, but what could we do to help empower uh, local businesses in the downtown east side? Uh, certainly by throwing the weight of your purchasing power behind our companies and so the city of Vancouver has been a fantastic champion for potluck for 15 years now we certainly appreciate that but also looking to other organizations in the community that have that as their mandate by Social Canada I know David LePage is in the room and he's there he's able to do that work some things you don't need to take on yourself you just need to look yeah. to those organizations that are already here and they can do it fantastic thank you so much you're welcome thank you all right thank you very much